Hey everybody, it's Justin at Vintage 55 Restorations here. Um, another episode of Vintage 55 uh, Garage. And uh, we've got uh, the newest uh, car, truck, vehicle, whatever, that uh, we've done one on. This is a uh, 1983 F350 Crew Cab 4x4 Ford truck. Um, and yes, if you didn't notice, I got an F100, an F250, and an F350. Um, anyway, this is a... a giant beast of a truck um, and uh, it's pretty cool actually um, so like I said 83 one ton truck um, 4x4 it's obviously huge um, it's actually 20 and a half feet long um, this is the uh, seventh generation of Ford trucks um, and uh, what many consider to be the last uh, generation of classic Ford trucks uh, due to a couple different features on it, like the sealed beam headlights um, and a couple other things, but uh, they're generally, like I said, that that generation of regard is the last you know, classic year, um, which uh, that generation went from 79 to uh, 86, and um, the uh, 79 actually had a new frame uh, that it was based off of. Um, this, like I said, 83. Um, Crew cab, obviously four four doors, long bed, extra long bed. <laughs> uh, the uh, powertrain is a 460 V8. It's not a diesel. It's the largest gas truck, uh, or the largest gas engine that you can get in a, um, And yes, it guzzles gas. Uh, it's hooked up to an automatic, in this case, a C6. Um, it does have uh, four wheel drive with locking front hubs. About the 83 actually this is an f350 but 83 was the last year that they used f100 uh, as the uh, as a base truck after that it went to f150 because the f150s were super popular and they kind of outmoded the f100 uh, 82 uh, if you look on here there is a uh, it's missing but there's an emblem where a blue oval would be um, 82 was the first year that uh, the Ford trucks got a blue oval on the grill um, that you think of as Ford trucks now. They have to have a blue oval on the grill. 82 is actually the first year. Um, it's been a trademark of Ford trucks ever since. Um, actually, every truck, every Ford truck ever since, except the uh, Raptor, which kind of made waves because it didn't have a blue oval on the front. Um, this one specifically is an XLT trim, which is just a little bit nicer interior. Um, but interior is not uh, original anyway. But anyway, um, do a little, little bit of a walk around. Uh, that's the history. So we put a uh, brush guard on the front and some, uh, some lights that are flipped upside down to mount a little bit better. Uh, it's a 460 so it does have AC um, that works, which is crazy. I've never had that before, and it's amazing. Um, lots of utility features, you know, hooks. That's what it's made for. It's made for, for using. Um, it's see, it's actually towing the 55 right now. Um, I got it on a tow dolly. We just took that up to the canyon for a photo shoot uh, that somebody hired it for. And uh, it tows it perfectly, perfectly fine. I don't even have the trailer brakes hooked up to it. And it, uh, it pulls and stops and everything like a dream. Um, big old general uh, tires on it. Um, that's everybody's favorite part for some reason, just because they're big, big tires. Uh, tow mirrors, western mirrors, uh, steps to get in. It's pretty, pretty rough. Um, bed. Just spend years. I cut the uh, the bumpers, the edges of the bumpers, and welded the bottom right there, so I actually have a step to get up, uh, which is nice. Um, the uh, the tailgate went for quite a few years. and rear and it goes through them very quickly uh, interior wise so like I said this is uh, the newest car that we have ever owned actually um, so it's got a lot of things I'm not used to air uh, seat belts 
cup holders, plastic everywhere, um, which uh, I don't like very much, but I actually do enjoy driving this truck quite a bit. Um, it, uh, it's super trucky, so it doesn't feel like a new car, even though it's 83, so I mean, it's not new. It's still older than I am, but um, you got your full gauge, uh, gauge setup. Uh, all this fake wood trim, that's part of the XLT package. Um, radio, air, got the tow controller for the brakes, um, GPS mount, cup holders, everything you need for a road trip. That's uh, what we got this for, was to be a uh, kind of a long distance road trip vehicle to pull a trailer and uh, give us more space inside for, for the road. So, uh, back seat, you'll notice uh, it's another bench and uh, we got a car seat back there. That's because the baby rides this all the time because Chelsea, my wife, um, drives this every day and parks it in the school parking lot and uh, carries the baby around like a boss in it. And um, she loves this truck ever since we got it. Um, it's been her daily driver, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of a beast of a truck. Um, yeah, like I said, it pulls the one ton just fine. Um, so this specific vehicle, the history on this one, um, we had a, uh, 68 Travel All International that there's another video on, a uh, project truck that we are planning on restoring. Uh, and then we ended up moving and I needed to get rid of a bunch of projects real quick. Um, went to go sell that and nobody wanted to give me a decent price for it. Um, it's actually worth money, but it's a very specific, um, very specific market. But anyway, so I couldn't get rid of it for anywhere near a good price. And this one guy uh, kept offering me trades, a couple different things for trading wasn't really interested and then he offered this to, to trade for it. Um, travel all wasn't wasn't running. I mean you could drive it around the block barely but everything was there. I gathered all the parts. Um, very easy to get drivable um, and this was drivable. It, it was using it but it was on his ranch so it was a ranch truck for the last eight years or so. Um, not being driven very much at all. Really only being you know used to haul dirt and hay and stuff around the, around the farm. Um, but, uh, so he'd never even registered it for the street. So, um, obviously I had a lot of back fees and stuff like that, which there's a there's a uh, California law that gets around that. Uh, if it's 25 years or older and you're registering it for the first time in your name with the title, uh, you can waive all back fees. So look that up if you're thinking about that. But anyway, so I didn't have to pay any back fees. Um, it was driving when I got it. He didn't trust that, so like he's not as uh, risk uh, risk prone as I am, I guess. But uh, anyway, we got uh, we got it traded. Started driving it the next day. Broke as much stuff as I could. Uh, found one in the, uh, the local pick apart, uh, a 250. Uh, got the, uh, the the bench seat was like out of an Astro van or something that we got, and so I found another bench seat that, that fits. Um, found a shifter that it was broken off, found uh, a bunch of random parts that, that it was missing. Um, went through the AC system, got that working, went through the cooling system, made that better. Um, and then uh, drive shaft, all the, uh, the joints were all jacked, so those are, those are gone through. Front bearings, um, I think that's about it. Oh, a new, uh, new uh, computer controller, uh, clean the carb out, lots of stuff. Um, and then uh, we took it to Santa Barbara, and then we took it up the coast farther. And, and like I said, Chelsea's been driving it every day, hasn't had any problems. Um, so it's it's pretty pretty much reliable now. But uh, um, anyway, yeah, we got it in a trade. Didn't really intend on getting one, but uh, it's kind of around now, and it's proven to be quite a great tool doing you know what it was meant to do which would be haul everything and uh, it uh, yeah it's a pretty cool truck so if you want to hear the 460 and uh, that's pretty much the last uh, last thing on it but uh, I'm supposed to have the keys ready on videos but got there in my pocket 